The Ethiopian city of Harar is one of the most important Islamic centers in Africa. It's famous for minting its own coins and for having given women the right to inherit land hundreds of years before other countries. Gulna Bradbury traveled to the once important trading city and sent this report on how it's declined since the turn of the century. This is Abdullahi Ali Sharif, an Ethiopian man fiercely proud of his culture. He lives within the ancient walls of Harar, a city in the country's eastern region. Abdullahi and the 30,000 inhabitants here are predominantly Muslim, in a country where the majority of people belong to the Ethiopian Orthodox faith. The city is one of the most important Islamic centers in Africa. There are no fewer than 89 mosques within its walls. This one is 800 years old. For centuries an independent city kingdom, Harar became an integral part of the Ethiopian Empire in 1887 after King Menelik II defeated the Emir in power. Harar has its own language, Harari, spoken only within its walls. It was once a major commercial center for East Africa, with trade extending to Egypt, Arabia and India. And like Aksum, another historical Ethiopian city, Harar minted its own coins. Abdullahi has a collection which spans more than 11 centuries, from 729 AD to 1886. It's the largest and most comprehensive collection in the world, totaling over 700 Harari coins. It was a center of Islamic learning, and it is a center of trade in, for East Africa, so that it has its own Quiet. Harar was advanced in other ways too. Two centuries ago, the city's women were given rights to inherit land, long before women in the West were allowed to do so. Abdullahi has the very book containing the declaration. The book is one of several volumes that testify to Harar's long history of bookbinding. Harari literature is primarily Islamic. This Quran from Abdullahi's collection was handwritten over 1,200 years ago in 743 A.D. Now, unfortunately, Harari binding is a dead art. But other crafts for which it's been famed through the centuries are alive and well. Basketry, pottery and silverwork. These older items show Arab and Indian influences harking back to its cosmopolitan past as a trading center. Nowadays, the quality of work may not be as fine, but the tradition continues. Eight-year-old Abdul Wahid Haji Muhammad is the most experienced silversmith in Harar. He says circumstances have affected quality. With 36 children from four wives to support, it's all a question of economics. <laughs> Nowadays, there's no demand for the finer, more expensive items that were produced in the earlier times. It would be too expensive for me to make them as they are for the tourists to buy. So I've been forced to decrease the quality of the products. But I can still make high-quality jewelry. Harari homes are also unique. This one, which once belonged to a religious judge 360 years ago, is now a museum. Most Harari homes within the city walls are similarly decorated. The main room is constructed on different levels to accommodate people of varying status. Shrines and monuments reflect its long history. This is the shrine to Amir Noor who gave Harar its walls. This statue of Ras Makonan, father of Emperor Haile Selassie, was made by Ethiopia's internationally known artist Afawerk Tekle during the Emperor's reign. Afawerk also designed these stained glass windows showing some of the rulers of Harar and Aksum. Colorful markets are a feature of the city. They sell all manner of goods from exotic spices to burners for frankincense. The region is an important center for cut, a narcotic leaf. Sold in its many markets, chewing chat, as it's called in Harar, is part and parcel of life here. Today, the walled city is no longer a center of commerce. 
Its decline began at the turn of the century, with the building of a railway which bypassed Harar, avoiding the surrounding mountains. The line, which extends from Djibouti to the Ethiopian capital, Addis Ababa, plays an important part in the Ethiopian economy, carrying much of its imports and exports. The people of Harar hope that one day their city will be declared a World Heritage Site so that international money may be channeled into its restoration. Gulnar Bradbury reporting.